Hello, and welcome to my Linux desktop. I use this for development and testing of Linux Air Combat. And today we'll be exercising version 8.44, scheduled for publication in early March of 2021. We're going to use it to configure a, a USB game controller as our primary control device instead of a website. Most people have been using conventional um, game controllers and if you go to our main web page right here, you'll see pictures of that and a lot of other things about Linux Air Combat. Um, and at the top of, of the main web page, there's a link to our frequently asked questions. So instead of this joystick, we're going to use that game controller I showed you. If you go to the top of the website, you'll see a button here to our frequently asked questions. Click. There's lots of information in our frequently asked questions. We're going to pay particular attention to number 53, and it's way down the list here. I know I've got a page already open to it. Question number 53. How do I configure or customize the axes and buttons of a USB compatible game controller or joystick for use as my primary flight controller? This gives you the details, and you can always find this, and it'll walk you through everything. It's illustrated showing you know, what this all looks like, you'll find that uh, this is going to require some experimentation. And as you watch this video, I'll show you all the principles. But I recommend that when you do it yourself, you also keep a, a copy of this frequently asked question number 53 handy because it you know, you, you'll get more details there as it's written out. Okay, um, one of the things you'll learn there is that your primary tool for making this configuration is going to be our configuration file. When Linux Air Combat is installed, it creates a new folder for you in your home directory. I'm firing up a file browser here. I'm in my home folder, and you'll notice there's a new hidden folder here named .lac. I'm going to enter that with a click, and these files are log files and configuration files specific to me and the way I fly Linux Air Combat on this machine. And of particular importance to this exercise, we'll be using lccontrols.txt. But even before we get into lacontrols.txt, we also want to make one little change into lacconfig.txt. All of this is discussed in our frequently asked questions, but I'm going to walk through it right now. Let's start by opening up the lacconfig.txt file with a click. That'll bring up a text editor. Actually, I want to use a different text editor. It'll be prettier. Right click and open with Kwrite. Gives me a better font for these movies. This is the configuration file for Linux Air Combat, and you use it to control all kinds of things. There are other movies and lots of other information about this file elsewhere in our online uh, documentation. But in the middle of the file, there's documentation for our network mode variable, and it has lots of explanatory documentation in it because you can do a lot with network mode. You know, it should be named something else because it controls so many different modes. But toward the bottom of this documentation about network mode, there's this set of text that gives you a summary of what we're going on to. And uh, because of this particular computer and its various details, uh, normally I run network mode with a value of 7 on this computer. Um, however, for this exercise, I'm going to add 32. Look at this line right here. It says, to inform Linux Air Combat that your analog joystick has spring load and return to center, add 32. Well, that means I'm going to add 32 to this value of 7, making it 39. So I'm changing that to 39, and I'll do File, Save. Let's talk about what we just did there. I'm quitting this, and I'm going to go back to this picture. This is the game controller I'm going to be using. I'm going to use this handle for elevators and ailerons. So when I'm flying the airplane, this is the one my right handle will be on. I'll use it a lot to roll and turn and pull. This one is going to be throttle and rudder. Uh, however, there's, uh, there's a little problem with throttle. Real airplanes have real, real throttle levers, and when you push the throttle level to, lever to a particular position on a real airplane, it stays there. So if you have a segment of your flight that require, requires full power, you push the throttle lever all the way forward and leave it there, and it stays there through that segment. Then if a later segment requires lower power, you pull the throttle lever back a little and release it, and it stays there. 
Well, these game controllers don't have a throttle lever like that. They don't have any lever that works that way. All of the analog axes in these game controllers have a spring that always returns them to their center position. So you can't just put your throttle on full and leave it there. Accordingly, we have to tell Linux Air Combat to compensate. And that's what I just did with that configuration that you saw. And what that means is Linux Air Combat is told when I press this forward, increase my throttle. And when I release it, leave it alone. That is, retain what you remember. When I pull my throttle back, we'll decrease. When I through the, pull this lever back, I'll decrease my throttle setting. And when I get to what I to the setting I want, I'll release it, and it'll stay there. So that's a different kind of behavior, and it does a pretty good job of compensating for the limitations of the throttle lever on these USB console-style game controllers. All right. All of that is discussed in this frequently asked question number 53. The, the text about throttle lever is actually toward the bottom down here. So this gives the details of what I just showed you, but the essence of it is you're going to add 32 to whatever you had in your LAC, con LAC, LAC config.txt setting for network mode. All right, the next thing we're going to want to do is let's fly the simulator. And, um, and I'm going to show you what happens when, when I, when the first time I fly with this simulator, with this set of controls, I think my mappings of all my buttons and all my axes will be crazy. Probably, although I want this to be elevator and axis, when I wiggle the, the, the handle for the first time, something else may happen. And I want this to be throttle and rudder, but when I actually wiggle these, something else may happen. So we're going to fire up Linux Air Combat and find out. Firing up Linux Air Combat is going to be a little different too. Uh, normally the way I do it is I fire up a command shell and type dot slash LAC. This is the usual way of doing it. Linux Air Combat, just like we expect. But can you see here, I've got it in full screen mode for, for reasons I'm going to explain to you in a minute. I don't really want it to be in full screen mode. So I'm going to click and go to Setup Options. And in Video, I'm going to turn off full screen mode here. And I want my resolution to be something like maybe 1280 by 720. So I'm going to have a smaller window, not full screen. I have to exit out. And I also want to have my command console go to full screen mode. So I have a big console and a small Linux Air Combat. How this is going to look. So I'm going to fire up Linux Air Combat this time. Linux Air Combat shows up in a smaller window behind or in front of my command console. I do this on purpose because we'll be able to look under the skins of Linux Air Combat back here and see what's happening when we wiggle controls. For this exercise, I'm going to be flying Network Battle 3 just for fun. So here I am in Network Battle 3, and I'm going to apply full throttle with my throttle handle, and I can see instead of throttle, it's giving me elevator. So I'm going to try my elevator control and see what that does. Ah, my elevator is going to be throttle. I can control my throttle with my elevator handle, so this is the handle I want to control my elevator, and it's giving me throttle. This is the handle I want to do my uh, my throttle, and it's giving me elevator. So I need to reverse my elevator and throttle handles. I'm going to press Escape and Setup Options, and I'm going to go to Game. And let's see, I can see my elevator is connected to Access One, and my throttle is connected to Access Three. I want to reverse that, so I'm going to change this one to Access Three. Click, click, and this one to access one. Like that. So I think I reversed those controls. And now I think I want to exit and restart. We hope to see you in the Linux Air Combat Online community again soon. I'm gonna run it again and see if my elevator and throttle axes work the way I want now. Going back to fly a mission, battle three, start. Here I'm getting full throttle, and it's working, I got throttle and elevator. So now elevator down, elevator up, throttle down, throttle up. And when my throttle, when I relax my hand on the throttle, it just stays there. Okay, so those two axes are now working. 
Now, I'm now going to move the, the handle that I want to be used for my ailerons. But I can see it's actually rudder. So my aileron handle is doing rudder. And now I'm going to wiggle the handle I want to be rudder, and that's ailerons. So i got to reverse my ailerons and rudder. I'm going to go here to Escape, and then Setup Options, Game. And so it was rudder and ailerons. So rudder is two, and that wants to be up here. And this one wants to be zero. And I think now, let's see if I, yep, now I've got it. Now, there's elevator, aileron, throttles going up, and rudders. All right, I've got elevator control the way I want it. I'm pressing forward to go down, pulling back to go up. I should be able to roll with my hip. I'm rolling with my aileron control, just like I want it. And my throttle, I can throttle down, I can throttle up. I can roll, uh, roll my rudders. Okay, so far so good. Let's take a look at that picture I had. So, this is now elevators when I push this forward and back to go up and down, or this goes down and up, down. Dived by pushing this forward. I can climb by pulling that that back. I can roll by going left and right here, and that caused me to roll clockwise or counterclockwise exactly the way I want. This is to increase throttle. I press up here, and it gets higher and higher and higher while I'm holding it. When I release the throttle, it stays where I have it. I can decrease the throttle by pulling it back. The throttle goes down, down, down while I'm pulling this back. When I release it, it stays the way I have it. When I want to go this way, I can do rudder left, and I go this way, I want to do rudder right. That's how I adjust my axes, and you do it by experimentation. Just try it and see what happens. Uh, that's a good stopping point for this movie. I'm going to stop at this point, and we'll resume it in the next segment. Thank you.